Welcome in this video. Today we're going to talk about um, an interesting point in aquaponics is how to to find out the exact biomass of fish you have in your aquaponic system. I already made some videos on this topic previously, but today we're going to work on uh, this new aquaponic system. I added 100 trout, so I know the exact number of fish I have in the setup. However, I don't know what is the biomass of fish. So when we talk about biomass, we talk about the total weight of all the fish into the pond. And here, I know how many fish I have, but I don't know how, ma how much they weigh. So To know this number, there is a very simple technique. We need to know the average weight of our fish. Once we know the average weight of our fish, we can multiply by the number of fish and we know the quantity of fish we have in the aquaponic system. So you may wonder why do we mind about this value? It's very important because the, this aquaponic system here that we have has some grow beds, right, with some media. And on this media we have bacteria. And the quantity of bacteria is giving us a maximum capacity, capacity of the system to handle fish. So basically we don't want to go over the maximum biomass capacity of the system. So I guess the maximum capacity of the system is around 40 kilo, because I got something like two cubic meters of uh, grow bed. However, I know that uh, the fish are way below 40 kilo. I, I have way below 40 kilo of fish here. But I still want to know how many kilo of fish I have. It's going to be good because then I can trace the quantity of fish I have in the system. And uh, I'm going to be able also to see how the fish are growing, right? Because as I feed the fish and consume some fish food, but I want to know how much fish I am growing with this quantity of fish food. So it's all the type of numbers that we want to follow when we are when we are growing fish in a fish farm is very important in aquaponics uh, if you are doing this in your backyard you may it's, it's not as sensitive because obviously you do it to produce some food for yourself but it's not at a big scale so giving a few kilo more of fish food or less it's not going to make such a big difference for you but i think it's still a very interesting indicator to know if we are doing well or not so that's what we're going to do today, right now. Um, I'm going to fish some fish and we're going to see the average weight of the fish. Now, in a fish farm, we generally say we need to weight 30 fish to have a good average weight. Because 30, from a statistical point of view, is considered as a minimum critical number to have a good representation of uh, the whole quantity of fish. So basically to do an average weight of 30 fish, if you have 1,000 fish on the pond, it's going to give you a good idea. Now here, in this, uh, in this case, in aquaponics, we very rarely have 1,000 fish or more. Uh, here I have 100 fish. So if I take 10% of those 100 fish, it's going to be already a lot. So 10 fish is going to be plenty to give me an idea of uh, the, the average weight of our fish. So the idea is to catch 10 fish and to weigh them. Now, how do we do that? We catch the fish. We need to do this in the morning, right? Because if you do it by the afternoon, after you have fed them, obviously they have some fish food in the tummy, so the number are not going to be accurate. While if you do it in the morning before feeding them, then you know that you're going to have some, uh, some values that is going to be quite accurate. So this morning I haven't fed the fish yet and it's going to be perfect because you can use a little bit of fish food just to attract the fish to you and then you fish them with a net. Uh, aside you have a scale and a bucket of water, you know the weight of the water in your bucket, you put your 10 fish inside and then you read the number so you just need to mix the difference between the number you had before and the number with the fish. Well, I say the total weight of the water plus the fish minus the weight of the bucket plus the water. It gives you the exact weight of the 10 fish. 
So then you can divide this number by 10 and it gives you the average weight of your fish. And then you can multiply this number by the number of fish you have in the pond. So in this case, it's 100. So let's do it together. Uh, it's going to be a bit of fun to catch the fish. So before catching the fish, you need to have a scale and a bucket. So here it's a, it's, <laughs> it's a waste bucket uh, because that's all I have on hand, but that's going to work perfectly. Uh, for the scale, you should put it on an horizontal surface, turn it on, put a bit of water in the bucket. Try to not scare the fish when you do that, because the fish, uh, they may run away. Okay, so I got my bucket and I have two kilo and 117 grams. So this you can either put it on a, on a piece of paper, you write it on a piece of, piece of paper, or you can take a picture such as I just did. Uh, and there are some scales, they allow you to do a tear. But if you do the tear, sometimes for some reason the scale turn off. And then when you have the fish, you don't know the number that it was. So it's better to write this number down, right? I know that the weight of the water plus the bucket right now is 2 kg 117 grams. Perfect. Uh, one thing to take in consideration, you don't want to do this 20 times because every time you stress the fish. So here we are working with trout, trout, very friendly fish. Uh, they are domesticated species, so they work really well. So I'm just gonna now try to catch them. As explained before, to catch them, I'm going to use a bit of fish food to attract them and then I catch them. I have my nets ready. And I got my fish. They look very nice. I got eight of them, so I just need two more. Ah, one more. Okay, I got my 10 fish and I can now see that it's 3 kilo and 48 grams. 3 kilo and 49 grams. You see when you can close the lid, the fish don't stress anymore. Very simple. So now I just need to do the difference divided by 10 and I know the average weight of the fish. So I'm going to release the fish right now because there is no point to keep them in this bucket. Up. So we had 3 kilo, 0 0.049 grams minus 2 kilo, 117, equal 932 grams, which means that every single trout here is 93 grams. So I take this number, basically I divide it by, by 10. 93 grams per fish. Now I multiply this by 100 and it gives me 9 kilo and 320 kg. That's the biomass of fish I have in this pond. So that's interesting because I continue feeding them and in one or two months I can do this number again, I can do this calculation again. It's going to give me uh, the progress I have, how the fish are growing in the pond. So very interesting. 
So I hope you, um, you find this uh, quite helpful. It can, it can be good if you have uh, the fish that are starting to grow and they are close to the maximum capacity of the system, you know. Here, for example, if I keep those 100 fish and I know that the maximum capacity of the system is 40 kilo, once the average weight is around 400 grams, I need to sell some fish. Well, I need to do it before, right? I don't want to reach close to the limit. Um, what I may do is to already sell some fish now and to push some, uh, you know, I can sell maybe 10, 20, and uh, push them a bit more. Or I can keep them longer. I will see what I, what I will do. But anyway, it's very good because then you know where you are at. So what you can do once you have done this, you can put it on an Excel spreadsheet. Uh, you put your average weight, the date, and the number of fish. Now, every time you sell fish, every time you harvest fish, you consume fish, or you have any fish that is uh, dying, it can happen as well, you need to keep a record of the number of fish you have in your aquaponic system. So if you know the number of fish, and if you're able to calculate the average weight, such as we just did, you know the exact biomass of fish you have in your aquaponic system. And from there, you know that you are safe in terms of uh, maximum capacity. Now we can feed the fish and have a bit of fun because it's always super cool to feed the fish. I'm just going to put the camera a bit closer. As you know, I just stress the fish. So any other species of fish, I mean, most of the other species of fish, you know, once you stress them, they don't come to the surface. But here we are with, a, again, a very domesticated species of fish, trout. And therefore, when I feed them with this type of uh, pellet food, you see for this type of uh, fish, they are 90 grams. Um, five millimeters is perfect. And you see they come. Even if I kind of traumatize them, <laughs> I didn't traumatize them, but you know, I, I fished a few, so they don't like it. But still, they, they are domesticated. They are, they are kind of used to human presence, and therefore they come. And that's really cool, right? Being able to feed your fish this way. So every time I, I throw some pellets in the, in the pond, I create some fish. So just so you know, uh, the trout has a conversion ratio of uh, below than one, so 0 0.9, which means, maybe you're not aware of this, but conversion ratio means how many kilo of fish food I need to produce one kilo of fish. So here it's 0 0.9, which, which means that every time I throw 900 grams of fish food into the pond here, there, I'm potentially growing one kilo of trout. So you may find this number extremely high and you may think it's not possible, but there is a very good reason for that. Is a, a fish is composed of close to 70% of moisture, 65, 70% of moisture, while the fish food I'm giving them here in my hands is only 14% moisture, eight to 14% moisture. Which means that uh, basically when they eat this, they're gonna, they're gonna produce some proteins in their body, they're gonna produce some, also a bit of uh, lipids. Um, and they are, they're gonna link uh, this with, with water, you know, to produce their body. So you are able to produce more fish than you consume fish food. That's very interesting. Now we have to be very honest, very real, realistic. To produce this fish food, this fish food is composed of a lot of different things, but inside there is a, a significant proportion of uh, fish meal. So from a sustainable point of view, growing food in aquaponics is really, really good, but it's better than a fish farm, right? But uh, it's not perfect yet. If we can find a way to produce our own fish food, we're going to be even much better from a sustainable point of view. And that's what a lot of people are working on right now. We all do our own experimentations. Uh, myself, as soon as I find insects, worms, whatever, I give it to the fish. Uh, it's great, but unfortunately, I'm not able to get enough insects to completely feed the fish because they are eating a lot, right? So, that's something you can do in your aquaponics uh, system. Uh, if you want more information about how to build an aquaponics system, how to manage it properly, I recommend you to get the free aquaponics training from the website Aquaponics Revolution. Uh, you can uh, get this free training uh, and it's going to give you a lot of critical information that you need to start aquaponics and to manage it in the best conditions. If you find this video helpful, please give it a like. 
Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I see you in the next video. Bye bye. Don't forget to get your free gift from this screen. You can also leave me a comment below the video, subscribe to the channel and see my last video. I really hope to see you soon and I wish you a fantastic success with aquaponics. Have a good crop.